Hi, happy, happy Tuesday. I hope you're all well. I hope everyone's okay. I think I'm just a little bit early, but oh, don't know what's going on. Where am I? Am I over here? Where am I? Am I over there? All the numbers have changed again on the cameras, randomly. Hi, I'm over here now. Hello. <laughs> Happy Tuesday, everybody. You got a little random overhead shot there for nothing, didn't you? <laughs> um, isn't it a glorious day? It makes me so happy when the sun's out. It really does. It's boiling, boiling, boiling today, which is lovely. We haven't didn't get the thunderstorms that they promised, so uh, that was good. Um, let's say hello to some people. Hi, Melba. Hi, Anne. Hi, Lindy Lou. Hello, my darling. Um, hope everyone's okay, which is fantastic. And you're all feeling uh, well, cool enough. You know, I'm quite lucky actually. The house stays quite cool, but the garden is um, is sunny, sunny, sunny. The shop's not too bad today either, actually. Normally it gets really hot in there, but it's it's quite nice in there today. Hi, Leslie. How are you? Sessa's back from holiday, so she's back in today, and we are busy getting ready for Saturday's class for the FPP class. Um, if anybody wants to join us on the craft weekend that we've got happening um, at the end of July. Um, please go on the website, have a little look and um, get booking in if on, on that one. I know lots some of you will be on holidays and all, but please do have a little look at that and um, get booked in if you want to. That will be our next one after this Saturday. Uh, hi Kate, hi Jane, hi Janet, hi Nikki, hi Natalie. Hello my lovely. I did enjoy a weekend. Yeah, I, I worked Saturday because Sarah was off. So I worked Saturday. Um, what did we do Sunday? I can't remember. We went out Friday night with Sam Dave, which was very nice because it was Dave's birthday. We went to a place called the One O'Clock Gate, Gate in Dennis, which was lush. Um, yeah, I can't really. I did lots of sewing yesterday, but that was quite nice because it was nice and cool in here. Hi, Grace. Hi, Marilyn. Hello, darlings. So um, I completely forgot about the challenge post. Sorry, we were so busy catching up with last week and getting ready for Saturday. I forgot to do the challenge post. So what I will do the challenge post tomorrow promise at one o'clock all right so um you've still got you've got an extra day if you haven't put a picture on go back on our main facebook page this one and uh, sorry i'm waving this knitting needle around we're going to be using it later <laughs> um and i feel like i'm conducting an orchestra <laughs> um you've got an extra day so i'll do the challenge post tomorrow um what we're going to do we're going to do a bag today now i wanted to use some double border print fabric that i um had in my stash and um decided i would kind of have a play around with a new um bag but i wanted to show you the techniques today basically that i've used because i've used some different techniques so it's a quite a basic bag i'll show it you now um it is quite a basic bag um hi lynn how are you lovely uh margaret you hope you see it sundown yes we're off to sundown next week as well you've still got time to get advanced tickets which i think are discounted so um so yeah we're at sundown next week so it's thursday friday saturday next week we are at sundown race course for grosvenor's um is it not quilts uk quilts uk is malvern I can't remember what the name of the show is. It's on our Facebook page. Sean put a post later. Earlier, it was rather. So, um, so anyway, let's get on with the bag. Let's get on with the bag. Enough of me yabbering on. Uh, right, okay. I think I'm. I'm think it's on three now. I think it's swapped back to what it used to be. It just randomly swaps. It does. So I had this lovely border print, okay, fabric, which I wanted to use. So um, I hope you can see that. Um, I wanted to use and I wanted to make a bag um, a big bag for carrying all stuff around when I'm going up to a chander and I've got to get all my demos and all my bits and pieces in that's what I wanted to use it for I love this fabric I think it's unbelievably beautiful it's a Dashwood Studio one it's gorgeous but I wanted to play with some different processes so I've made just a very basic bag but I've put I don't know if you can see here I've put this little piped um, edge in here in between the top and the and the main border fabric and we've also done, I've done some little ties on the top as well, just to keep it closed rather than having like a magnetic clasp because I didn't want anything coming over into this. So I thought well, we've got nice little points on the end as well. So I thought I'd show you some basic construction of it, but also how we're going to have a little go at binding and I'm going to show you how to do these ties as well. OK, um, how to get these lovely neat points. So and then you can just tie in a bow like that. 
and then you've got your bag already and then you've got straps you've boxed the corner put a nice base in okay so this is what we're gonna have a little go at today you don't have to use a double border print on this you could use any fabric at all okay this could be you need basically need three half meters for the whole of it uh grosvenor quilt championship that's it lovely yes thank you lynn you can you, you need three half meters for this okay um i will i forgot my flipping book with all my, my measurements in but i'll go through them okay i'm for the sample one i'm using this the japanese one again it's a dashwood studio um so i'm going to go through what you need so first of all you are going to need two rectangles which are 20 inches by 16 and a half. The 16 and a half is down the side, just in case you're using a directional fabric, okay? The 20 is along the top. You then need a base piece, which is 20 inches across by four inches wide, okay? And you'll need, obviously, need two of all of these because both sides of the bag. Uh, beautiful day it is, isn't it, darling? It's a really beautiful day. You then need a piece that is 20 inches by three inches, which is for the top, sorry, three and a half inches, which is for the top. And then you're gonna need two, basically from whatever fabric I've used is the piping, and the, sorry, not the piping, the, the top. I made my straps and ties out of this. And I used two strips that were four inches across the width of fabric. I then cut four by 28 and a half for one, for one strap out of it. And the bit that was left, left, I cut it down, which so it's three inches by 14. And obviously you'll need two of those as well. You need a bit of wadding, and then you want the lining, which is 19 and a half by 21 and a half, twice. Don't worry too much about remembering all that. I will put a post up with all the, with all the um, measurements. But I thought we'd go through, first of all, and just have a little look about how to put this all together. Now, first things first, we're just going to put the base on all right so that was the four inch strip i haven't even cut this one down i'm going to trim it down afterwards so we're just going to put that on the bottom all right so i'm going to just put this on the bottom piece here i'm going to use edge of foot which is three eighths of an inch for me um throughout all right so it's not a quarter inch seam allowance it's a three eighths of an inch so first things first base goes on and obviously you're going to make two of these exactly the same for either side of the bag it really doesn't have to be a border print I mean I'm using a border print hang on sorry I've got wedges on in my there we go <laughs> I wasn't quite uh quite on the foot pedal right because I had wedges on rather than bare foot which is what how I normally so <laughs> there we go so I've just got my standard walk, uh, standard um, foot on, and I'm using edge of foot on this one. So it's a bit bigger than a quarter of an inch, about three eighths. With a bag, you want it to be a bit more robust, don't you? There we go. So that's the first little bit done. And then, uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> come back for ironing board, and then we're going to go back over here. We move all my rubbish out of the way. And we're just going to iron that out towards the base. Okay. You know, this bag would be lovely if you've got... Oh, look, you just see that little turtle on that one. Um, if you've got a border print that you want to use, or if you've got a fabric that's got a really big print on it and you're not sure what to do, use that as this main piece instead. So I'm just pressing that out towards the, the base fabric and then we're going to trim off. So flap that around a weeny bit. And I'm just going to trim off in line with the edge of the fabric. Just to double check, I'm going to put a horizontal along the seam and go up there. All right, so the first process, nice and easy. What I want to show you now is I want to show you the bind, uh, how to do the piping for those of you who have not done piping before. And we're going to do the ties and the straps as well. And basically kind of the rest of it is very basic bag construction. Hi Eileen, how are you lovely? You're loving the fabric. Yeah, this is the, it's called Blossom Days by um, Dashwood Studios. We have got this border print in on the website if anybody's looking for it. Um, now with piping, normally you would cut it on the bias because piping tends to be like round cushions on things like that, right? You know, things that you need that bit of stretch. But because this is gonna go straight across the bag here, all right? 
just cut a one and a half inch strip, all right? Uh, I'm using the same colour as my lining to give myself a little bit of contrast between this fabric and the top. But if you wanted it just to look as a nice little detail, you could do it at the same fabric as the, the top fabric in the base. But I've cut a, a little one and a half inch strip. I've made it about 22 inches long so that it's a little bit bigger than this. Just give myself some wiggle room. And I've got a piece of piping cord. I think this was a size five. But again, it can be thinner or thicker entirely up to you. You're going to sandwich this in between all right so you're literally just going to sandwich it along the middle and line up those raw edges like that i always pop a pin in at the start just to just to help me okay and we're going to go back over to the machine hi karen how are you lovely hi sarah how are you as well you all okay so i'm going to put a, a zipper foot on it's much much easier with a zipper foot you want to get as close to the pipe in as you can so i'm just going to swap my foot over I love how quick this is. There we go, foot on. And then I'm just gonna change my um, foot as well. So this machine needs to know that it's it, where it is. Now, I'm gonna put this underneath and hopefully you'll be able to see guys. So if I just sewed with like the foot down there like that, I'm not actually very close to this piping. Basically, what you want to do is get it so that the stitching is there, like right next to the piping. So move your needle over. You won't be able to do this with a normal foot on, okay? You really do need to put a zipper foot on this because a normal foot will just rise up, will try and sit on top of this piping cord here and it just won't work, all right? So put a zipper foot on, it's worth it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my needle over towards the pipe in as far as it will go right get it get it as close as you possibly can the closer you can get to the piping cord the neater your piping will look it'll look more professional okay i'm going to take that pin out that's the only bit i pin just to hold it in place and then i'm going to basically what i'm feeling for is that pipe in i tend to use one finger hold it all the way down fold over the next little bit like that. Oh, come on. Fold over and just keep an eye on where that piping cord is. Get that stitching as close as you can. Don't be frightened of piping. Piping's really easy. Really, really easy. Especially in something like a bag like this where it's just a straight line of it and it really does. Says, How's the new machine? I love it, Marilyn. It's unbelievably good it really is i i sewed on it all day yesterday and i'm just loving it really it may it's you know you know i've always loved my brother loved love love my brother this is diff i've said it before i said it again it's a different kettle of fish it really is it does everything uh oh it's wobbling is it oh okay right i will try and try and angle it a bit harder love so it doesn't wobble sorry hun you had a very wobbly then, didn't you? Hang on, I'm trying to... All right. Hopefully that'll be better. A bit too close, it's vibrating with the machine. I've tried to move it back, but then angle it in a bit better, okay? And what I've got there is my binding done to start with. You've got a binding, piping. You've got that really nice, neat little edge like that, all right? And it's, it's as close as I could get it to the piping, so. I'm going to go back over to here and what we're going to do now is we're going to sandwich this in between this and the top all right so we find the top piece nope that's a strap that's a strap is that the three inch piece three and a half inch piece no that's the that's not it where's where's my top piece i've lost my top piece peoples that must be it yep that's it there that's for the tie Okay, so again, you could tack this in if you wanted to, but it's only a small piece and it's on a straight line. So I, I find I don't need to, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the edge of the fabric right on the edge of the edge of this board, main fabric here, this border fabric. And then I'm going to put my top piece in between like that, line up all those edges and then put a pin in okay and I do pin the, um, along the same way and take them out as I go with this 
so we're going to go edge to edge to edge like that there we go and again so how are you is everybody okay anybody been up to anything exciting anybody got well i'm just pinning this in anybody got any any news to tell me no my husband and i booked a uh second honeymoon last night so we're going to do our renewal in kefalonia in september we're going to be home for two days and then we're flying to amsterdam for a long weekend which is uh quite nice i'm very spoilt <laughs> there we go all the way down like that nearly there I do like a bit of piping as, as Sarah said I do like a bit of piping um I just think it gives a nice little detail quite looks quite professional as well when you've got a bit of piping in something I always think right okay so we're going to go back to the machine hopefully it won't won't wobble quite so much and again what you're going to do is you're going to be feeling as you sew, you want to get that stitch in as close to the piping as you can again. So you're going, I'm going to be feeling for where that piping is. And I basically kind of use my thumbnail like that as I'm going to make sure that I'm kind of hitting the right spot. All right. Um, what's that? Ollie did want to set off his nap. Oh, Jonah's just woken up for his nap. Jonah's just woken up. Right, I'm going to turn the machine down so it's um, not wobbling quite so much, not going quite so fast. Maybe that'll help. Um, it's the last week that Jonah Benjamin, my little man, will be here with us during the week. He starts nurse, he's starting a nursery next week. So no more Jonah, Jonah and Josh days. I won't have him on a Wednesday night anymore. I'm very sad. Uh, hi Carol, last day in Italy, home and all the washing and ironing before you consider sewing again. Oh, I know, the joy of, mind you, the weather's beautiful. I did four loads of washing yesterday and it all dried, it was amazing. <laughs> so I'm just working my way down quite slowly. Hopefully that it's not wobbling quite as much. You haven't got a brilliant angle on that, I'm afraid. I know you've got a lot of the throat, but I didn't want it to wobble too much. And I can just kind of feel and work. And can you see, I'm just readjusting this fabric as I go. Okay, so if it starts to move a little bit, if it starts to pucker, don't worry too much. Just readjust as you go. It's much better, thanks. Brilliant. Cool. Good, good, good. Right. Oh, hang on. Let's just readjust that one. Because you've got like three different layers here, etc., it will walk against each other a little bit. So don't worry too much if it has to move. I always do give you a bit of wiggle room with the measurements anyway. But take your time on this. Slow down a little bit and just make sure that it's all lined up and everything is and you're getting as close to that piping as you can the joy about piping is if you do go a bit wonky you can go back in and just restitch it and it won't matter there we go okay right okay so just double checking i always tend to double check just to make sure that i've gone as close as i can and that's all gone in nice and neatly the stitch on this machine is so delicious <laughs> there we go all right so we've sandwiched that pipe in in between that um the main fabric and the top now and then what we want to do is just bring this over here and give it a little press all right now i like to press it towards i like the piping to sort of sit downwards rather than sit upwards um so i like so you're going to press the fabric towards the top and by doing that, it will kind of push the piping downwards. There we go. Give that a press. Like that. If you find there's any bits that you think, oh, I'm not close enough on that, just go back in, flip it back over and restitch as close as you can. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a line of top stitch in on this side just to hold all this down. So I'm just going to go in about... 16th of an inch all the way down okay so um you had a massive electric storm last evening L lasted nearly two hours oh wow with hail and torrential rain you should have to water the garden i know I, wow we haven't had anything like that they kept saying that there were weather warnings for <whistles> wow can you hear him right i'm just going to move it back over so that it's where i want it to be 
you hear him, hear him squealing? It's because Josh is chasing him around the place. And there we go, all the way down. I'm a bit sad that I'm not going to be seeing him during the week, but no doubt it means I will have him more often during the weekends. <laughs> There we go, all the way down, just a nice little bit of top stitching. I've got the machine still turned down quite slowly at the minute. I've, I've turned it right down less than half just because I don't want the camera to wobble. So. There we go. So, pipings in. How easy was that? Super simple, wasn't it? Um, not done to pipe before, might give it a go. It looks easier than you thought. Yeah, it really is lovely, isn't it? Really, really easy to do. Yeah, never, uh, don't worry about piping, it's it's such a, I mean, it's just that easy if you do it um, with bias as well, if you're putting it around the edge of a cushion, then you're just going to trim off any excess, okay, so again, I'm just going to line up, seam like that, right angle, and trim off that little bit of excess there, and we're going to flip it round, and do the same this side, and that's one side of your bag done. Okay, so this is nice and easy to do. There we go, like that. So we've got one side done, all right? What I want to show you now is the little ties. Okay, so I've got a three inch by 14 inch piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of jiggery pokery to get that really nice, neat end. So you're going to start just by doing as we always would fold it in half and iron like that, give it a good press, open it back out like that and then fold in. So just like you would do any sort of strap or anything to start with, like that, all the way down, fold it into the center and then same this side, oh my god, he's like a monster today, he's so loud. <laughs> giving Joshy some grief all right so I've just put those tram lines in ready all right so normally we would then do that for a strap wouldn't it we but this bit is going to be sewn into the bag but this end here is going to be free because they're going to be ties so what I thought would be nice is have a little point on the end so what we're going to do is we're going to fold it right uh, wrong right sorry right sides together like that and a bit like doing a Dresden plate we're just going to stitch along this end here Okay, so I'm going to quickly whip back over here and we're going to, oh I've still got my um, zipper foot on but it won't matter just for this. Okay, and I'm just going to stitch across that end and then just make sure, reverse off yourself like that. I'm just going to swap back, so my, because I don't, I'm done with the zipper foot now, so I'm just going to swap back while I think about it while I'm here. Uh, where is it? There it is. That goes down. Jewel feed comes down, and I'm done. No, nope. and change over to back to the other foot. There we go. No, oh, what is it doing? I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. I'm still not used to all the buttons. Okay, so I'm back to my other foot now. Right, if we go back over here, <laughs> noisy boy. What we've done is just sewn across there. Trim off the the closed point like that okay and then flip it through like that hi baby do you want to come and say hello to everybody come here come here baby do you want to come and say little sweaty boy should we say bye bye to everybody because you, you're not going to see the ladies much anymore not unless i do a one o'clock live oh, yeah. on a oh, weekend yeah. can you say hello to everybody <gasps> who's that on the screen can you say hi can you do a bit of waving? Can you see yourself? Go on, do a bit of waving. Can you say bye bye to everybody? Oh, you're very serious all of a sudden. That's it, bye bye, wave everybody. Say bye. Can you wave? Bye. No? Go on then. Go on, yeah, because he's not going to be here during the week anymore. He's going to be at nursery. Can't believe he's old enough to go, but he, he needs it. It'll help with his speech and all and everything as well, I think. Um, so what I've done is I've just turned that the right side through so you've got that lovely point and I get that need knitting needle in there and just gently ease it out. 
line up the seam with the center point like that okay and then give it a good press there we go like that now we can fold it jonah darling no screaming please <laughs> so loud today then we're gonna refold it okay so those are going to come into the middle give it another little press like that and then fold over again like that and you've got that really nice neat little point like if you were doing a bit of dressmaking or something and you needed to make ties or maybe it, oh i might do that next week actually a tie cushion um tie sided cushion okay and you've got that lovely lovely little point there i'm going to pop a pin in and then what we're going to do is we're going to stitch all the way down the open end all the way down top stitch like that across like that and then all the way down the long end all right so yeah just a nice little way of making a nice neat point on the tie okay um where we go over to here uh it's gonna yeah you're gonna miss hearing hearing him it won't be the same it won't will it lovely <laughs> it won't be the same it's um yeah it's gonna be strange him not being here during the week and i'm gonna miss him a lot because i do get i'm very lucky and i get to spend a humongous amount of time with him but nursery is going to be better for him um definitely i think he needs to be with lots more kids his own age and uh and all the rest of it so but it's going to be strange and i'm not going to have him on on my wednesday night which is my favorite night of the week it's just Jonah and granny time however i won't be woken up at half past six in the morning which it would be nice <laughs> so there we go all the way around just oh, one more one more there we go um, <laughs> it's so ridiculously loud today <laughs> uh, i think the sun's gone to his head here we go all the way down this one and that's one of my ties made There we go. It is cool, Martha, doesn't it, Carolyn? I really like that. I think it gives this, you can see it close up there, it gives this really nice, neat little edge for any sort of tie. If you're making an apron or something, just gives it a nice little professional finish. I don't know if you can, let me go back to the main camera. There we go. You can see that that's all nice and, and flat now. Okay, so you're going to make two of those as well. Next thing, we'll put that to one side. I'll show you what we're going to do that in a minute is your straps now where what have i done with the wadding that i cut i cut a piece of wadding ready for this and it's vanished hmm. aha is that it there aha got it so the straps are four inches by 28 and you're going to start by doing the usual method that we just did for those ties <laughs> i'm really sorry about the squealing Josh is winding him up and he's in full vocal loud mode. Here we go, all the way along, we're gonna iron that over like that. And like that, Oop. throw me iron about. And then just as we did before, we're then gonna iron it into the center. But then we're gonna do another little trick. It gives it, makes it, you, it gives you the sort of exact measurement of the handle for the wad in then. So this was four inches by 28 and a half, and my wadding strip is one and a half inches wide. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this out and I'm gonna do this edge to that line there, okay? So don't, so I've already gone to the middle, so I'm now gonna pull it back and do it to that edge there. And this gave me like perfect measurements. It just worked so, so well doing it like this. You know, you could probably use like a hot hammer or something instead of ironing to the middle and then ironing again, but I didn't have a hot hammer with me. So ooh, this is how I did it and it worked lovely. There we go, all the way down like that. And then we need to do the same the other side. So through the center first um so i'm just kind of keep an eye on the comments at the same time guys so how are you keeping all cool uh, does anyone remember those lovely neck coolers that sarah made 
Was it last year or the year before? Did any of you make those? We might need to be making more of those at some point, I think. If this this heat wave's finished, uh, you know, carries on like this. And then like that. You basically, it's a half inch seam allowance over, but rather than having, to, sorry, I've got hiccups. Rather than having to measure it all out, I was like, Ugh, no, I can't be bothered to measure it. Didn't have my hot hammer, so. Did it like this and it worked perfectly. And over again. There we go, like that. So, strip of wadding, which is uh, one and a half inches wide. Okay, and then that's gonna sit along the center line like that and over. And it sits perfectly now between the center line and this outside crease, all right? It's a perfect little measurement like that now. Now, rather than trying to put it all together, one side and then the other, I, again, I found it easier to do this in stages. So, fold that over like that. So I'm flipping that over, that one and a half inch, and you can see that that works perfectly. And I'm gonna use clips now. So tuck that in, tuck that one over, and then bring this one over like that. And another clip in, and just work your way down. Okay. We have um, actually been able to get hold of the, um, the, sh the wadding shoulder strap stuff again. Um, that's due to come into the shop. You can buy it on a roll. So rather than having to cut, try and cut exact sizes for strapping, you can buy it ready on a roll. So um, I've, we've found, managed to find a supplier that actually does it. So um, it's made by the same people who do Bozal and they do the, the strips ready for strapping, which is great. Saves a lot of messing about. There we go. Nearly there. And then just as we would normally on a bag, on a strap, not a bag, a strap. <laughs> We're gonna stitch either down at both sides, one to enclose this edge and then one to echo it the other side, okay? So back over here we go. I'm, I'm gonna just go a little bit faster this time. So let me just tuck that underneath. So, so far, pretty simple stuff, yeah? You all all right with what we've done so far? Okay, tuck that back under and away we go. And then it's one line of stitch here to make the strap. I want to put the front, the two front and backs together so I can show you again another little trick for doing the base and getting the getting the boxed corners nice and neat. I've been all about the tricks and tips this time. Having to head, having to work from home today as the heat is impacting on your education. You're feeling dehydrated. Oh bless you. Yeah, it is, um, it is a warm one, isn't it? Oh, I should have stopped. Shouldn't have read the comment. That's gone really wonky because I wasn't looking at what I was doing. <laughs> no, I'm sorry you're feeling rough though, lovely. Um, try and stay nice and cool. Lots of water. Keep, keep hydrated. Here we go. All the way down that side. And then we're going to whip down the other side as well. Okay, and down we go. In fact, I'm hoping this is not going to bounce too much. Oh, that is a bit bouncy, isn't it? Sorry, I'll go back down slow. There we go. It's on like super fast speedy sewing. And off the end there you go okay back over here and we can start assembling the whole thing now so got a piece of wad in which is gonna hopefully fit this I would if I could find what I've done with it where is it there it is <laughs> all right so first things we're gonna do is we're gonna wad this up so yeah that's big enough I'm going to spray baste. You don't have to spray baste. I like to though. It just works for me. I, I prefer a spray baste on pretty much anything. There we go. Like that. Ooh. I do love this fabric. It's so pretty. And then that 
outside. But you could pick out, I mean, I've picked out a couple of the colours, but you could pick up any of the colours. You could do it in this pink and blue. You could do go with like a hot pink and a navy, whatever you want, really. Okay, here we go. So now we need to trim off all this wadding and we can put the outside of the bag together. I'm not sure we're going to get the whole thing done today because of time, but I was. this one was really about showing you the you know the extra little little trips tricks and tips rather than a bag because you guys can all make a bag now you've all done this loads there we go trim off all that excess wadding you could then at this point do some quilting if you wanted to you know if you wanted to you know, you could do some long stitching or like sashiko type thing on it couldn't you but you don't need to i just i like wadding in a bag just because i think it gives it a bit of body but you could absolutely do some quilting if you wanted to if you wanted to add feet you know the little like brass feet or something to um the base you could there we go and the last thing we've got to do then is attach that tie and there we go get rid of all of that what we're going to do is we're going to attach the tie and the strap to this side so there's the strap so somewhere I've got a pair of scissors. I'm just going to chop off that bit of wadding, excess wadding that side and excess wadding that side. The tie is going to go right in the middle. So fold this in half, finger press, find the middle, which is there. And your tie is going to sit just like that. Give it what quarter of an inch over the edge. OK, pop a pin in like that. And then your strap wants to come in six inches either side. So I'm going to measure six inches in like that. And I'm going to put one edge of the strap. So I want the six inch to be on the, the inner edge. So can you see it's going, to, it's going to go that side. If you put it in that side, it's too close. Okay, so you want it that side. There we go, like pin it in there. And then six inches in from this side so make sure this isn't twisted round like that and I want the edge to go like that and then you're going to base this in so I'm just what I'm going to do is just base these across the very top about an eighth of an inch away from the top so it's all pretty standard bag stuff now guys you know it's all stuff that you've all done before when you've made a bag but it was really about trying that piping because it's not difficult piping. There we go. Just base that in, base the little tie in like that. Ooh. You'd be right if I press the right button, wouldn't it? <laughs> Still getting used to the it's muscle memory, isn't it, with buttons? After a while, it's like you know where they are, but I'm still getting used to it. There we go. Okay, back over here we go. And we can put the two sides of the bag together now. So I'm over this side. Now I've already obviously done, take those pins out. I've already done the other side of the bag. Yeah, I did that one yesterday. All right, like that. And we're going to put these right sides together and you're going to sew down the two sides and down the bottom, across the bottom. Now, couple of little points you really want to look for all right is first one is this pipe in here so make sure it's lining up so I can't oh, hang on let me get in the right spot so you want to make sure that they are really well lined up like that so you get that lovely continuation right the way around put a bit on there the other place you want to really make sure that you're lined up is the base so again make sure that that base to base is nice and again because that's not as thick I'm going to put a pin in that one like that and do it again on the other side those are the points that are going to you know make your bag look a little bit more professional look a little bit more classy classy bag if they're all like you know matching up so that one there and then again make sure that that binding is match to match like that and pop that one on there 
Oh. Our Drew is in uh, Disney at the moment. I don't know if he's coming home today or tomorrow. He's in Disneyland Paris and they've got amazing, they're the most beautiful weather over there. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch down there across the bottom and up and then I'm going to show you how to box it but what you want to look for in the boxing. And then I'm not going to do the whole end of the, you know, finish the bag because that really is just, you know, putting the lining in, etc. You know, I, you guys know how to do that. Look back on one of our other bag tutorials if you need to. So I've st used an edge of foot again. We're going to go all the way down. Did you see how easily she dealt with that thickness? That's going through the, the piping and everything. And she just whisked over it. So happy with this machine, it's amazing. There we go. All the way down. So I've been watching, re or rather re-watching, all the old sewing bees. So on BBC iPlayer, you can watch all the old Great British sewing bees. So I've started from season one again. And uh, it's really interesting to see what the challenge, how different the challenges are, and how different the people, you know, the people are, are all on there. So the first series had uh, Stuart Hillard on it, and Tilly from Tilly and the Buttons. I don't know if you, anybody knows her patterns, um, but I've just started uh, season two. But yeah, really interesting to see how different some of the. Um, the pattern, you know, the design, design challenges are. They're definitely having to, um, what's the word? Think a little bit harder now, maybe, to come up with new stuff, because um, it was very easy at the beginning, <laughs> some of it. Not easy, don't get me wrong, I couldn't do it in the time, time scale, but a lot of it was quite easy, so. Are you all still there, guys? You've all gone very quiet. We've all gone very, very quiet. Oh, let me just make sure that that tie isn't caught in there. One last little bit and then we're going to finish, okay? There we go. Nearly there. Oh, hang on. And over we go. You're still here, excellent. Cool, cool, right. One, like I said, one last little bit and we're not actually going to box both sides. I'm just going to show you how we're going to do it, okay? So, in order for the fact that you want the base to be the base and not show up like on the bag, if you open this seam up like that, you can actually see there, can you see where the base fabric meets the, the border fabric? So, I'm going to put my hand inside like that and I want the side seam to meet the bottom seam. So again, open that up. Come on, open up, open up, open up, open up. There we go. Open that seam up like that. There we go. And if you put a pin through that little join there where it joins there to there, and you wanted to make sure that it's going to come out right in the centre there, all right, which it is. And then I'm going to pin that down so that I've got those seams open all right like that I'm gonna now like flat and hopefully if my measurements are right that should be three inches from oh sorry guys <laughs> from this point here so from the very edge from that point there to the base should be three inches so let me just measure that and it is okay so I'm going to draw a line right the way across. Basically, you're following that seam there where the base fabric meets the, the outer. All right. And we're going to draw a line across. Like that. And like that. And it's just standard boxing corners then. Okay. So I will do one, one across, okay, and we'll chop it off. You would do the other one exactly the same. I've just realised what the time is. I've been here for ages today. Ages and ages. I need to get back over that sharp. <laughs> so, it's because I was showing you lots of techniques, wasn't it? <laughs> there we go. Take that out of there. Following that seam right the way across, like that. 
I'd probably go do another line, you know, and really reinforce it. But for time wise, we're going to leave it that for now. Oh, and then just chop off this excess. All right. So give yourself about half an inch seam allowance. Chop off that excess bit. All right. And then you do exactly the same on the other side. Find where that base fabric is and sew across. So that when you turn this this way out, like that, hopefully, haha, you wet. Can you see my base is sat really, really nicely on that fabric? Okay, so it means you've got, you know, it won't, you won't be, you won't have any of the base showing up here at all, right? It's going to sit really nicely. You would then repeat that on the other side, okay? So I'd repeat that that side as well so that you've got your bag like that and then standard lining of a bag I will put all the measurements on for you so I've sewn down the two sides left a gap in the base I've boxed my corners three inches the same as the outer okay and then we would shove all of that inside so round you make sure all the straps are down just it's standard bag stuff then so all the way around and then pull through the base okay which will give you your bag all right your straps will be out like that your tie will be nice and out as well you can then top stitch all the way around if you know if you want to i think it gives it a nice finish and just helps really anchor in the straps and stuff oh camera oh i'm so sorry ah oh, after me showing you all that right let me just very quickly show you that corner again. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I need a bell. I need to need to have some sort of bell, don't I? <laughs> right, you can see that that base has gone in. Lovely. Can you see it's it's right sat right on the corners, which means it'll it'll sit nicely when the bag's done. All right, and then lining as we were saying. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All the way down. Gap at the bottom box it three inches okay and then stuff one inside the other make your bag as you, that bit is the same as we would always do yeah but then that you can then top stitch along the top once you you've done that okay i did on this one as well put a little pocket in on the inside okay so i've put just a little patch pocket with a cam snap you can decorate it up as as you wish you might want a, a zipper pocket in there you know whatever you want i just wanted one that i could put you know put some bits in and just cam snap it i put that on before i i sewed the lining in okay um just obviously because you need to be able to get in for the cam snap but you could put a zipper pocket or anything you could put extra pockets in if you wanted but let me come back to here sorry about that camera there's me rabbiting on you didn't get to see any of it <laughs> um but then you've got that really nice little tie at the top there just to keep the bag closed yeah which i think is a nice little detail and then you've got your bag like that okay so with that little bit of piping i think just just gives it a little bit of something extra doesn't it and it's nice nice little project to have a go at piping if you've not done it before so that was a long one i know it was sorry my darlings um i'll be back tomorrow with a block and then sarah is back with book weight part two do you remember the book weight guys where Josh and uh, Sarah got the giggles and they couldn't stop laughing. She's going to do it properly this time for you. <laughs> well, I hope she is. Let me just unplug that iron because it's getting very close to the laptop. Um, so, yeah, she's going to do an, a book weight, weight again for you, but do it properly without her and Josh get the, getting the giggles and, and getting it really wrong. So, uh, so yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Sorry, rabbiting. I lost my train of thought then. Um, I'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock. Take care. Enjoy the sunshine.